Hey guys, so today I actually reacted to the Apple September 12th event and during the video I did a little bit of commentary and at the end I gave you some of my thoughts. So I'm super curious what they did with the new iPhone. Hopefully they improved it. Nothing's the friggin' Apple Watch 9 is coming lives. out apparently. And its GPU is 30% faster. I don't know why a watch would need a f***ing GPU inside of it, but okay. It's made of 68% post-consumer recycled content. Change of rich colors. That's, that's cool i guess like the way that they're actually like distributing reusable like recycled materials in there is pretty cool but those don't look comfortable like what would they even feel like well, i'm sure you would feel it on your wrist all day and diving the world's oceans that looks photoshopped but again maybe that's just me we're introducing apple watch ultra 2 with incredible new features that elevate any event what are they gonna add, a new sensor? So the thing about these Apple update iterations is that sometimes the stuff that they add in their new product could be added in their old product with just a software update. I mean, the iPhone 14 has the same CPU as the iPhone 13, just with what, a slightly different camera? And yet the cinematic mode in the iPhone 14 can go up to 4K, but on the iPhone 13, it's only locked to 1080p. You can increase it to 4K with a software update. But no, that's just not what they're gonna do. Another thing is that the iPhone XR and the iPhone 12 apparently have the same exact freaking Face ID sensor, but the Face ID with the mask only works with the iPhone 12 and up. How come? That's kind of weird. And it's kind of greedy. The hardware they're selling is fully capable of doing more than what they program it to do. Now, here's the real question. Is the low-end iPhone 15, is that going to get a 120Hz display? I will be super disappointed if it doesn't have a 120Hz display. I mean, the Nothing phone has a 120Hz display. And the Nothing phone is like, what, $400? iPhone 15 is absolutely incredible. See yeah, how incredible it really is. The dynamic island flew 2,000 nits, twice as bright as iPhone 14. So the thing with this is, I heard that if it's too hot outside, the iPhone is gonna dim the display, so it's not gonna stay at this fabled 2,000 nits forever. Of course, moping hills and even the individual shingles are- Okay, that's actually kind of cool. But the thing is, the reason why these individual shingles on the houses are so defined is because they're overprocessing the image and they're adding sharpness to the image, to an otherwise just fine looking image. The sharpness really just brings out those super tiny details, but it makes the rest of the image look sort of like it's taken on a phone. Then, Photonic Engine takes the image and combines it with the image for rich details, and has a practical file size that's great for storing and sharing. So, alright, the thing about this image processing is that uh, it processes your image and then it burns it into the original image, which is perfectly fine for the average person, but they don't give you the option to just take a raw photo. Sure, they have Apple Pro Raw and ProRes, but they are still processing the photos and saving it to these raw formats, which is technically not what a raw photo is. A raw photo is raw and unprocessed. Like, the thing with these small phones is that even though there are more megapixels, it, the other aspects of the image is not gonna be that great, such as, say, the blur in the background, because they're not really increasing the sensor size that much. I mean, they can, they can increase it if they make their phone just a little bit thicker. I'm sure everyone would be perfectly fine with a slightly thicker phone, if that means better battery life and a better camera. Also, another thing, 8K is 33 megapixels. The main camera on the new iPhone is 48 megapixels. The iPhones can theoretically theoretically record in 8K, but they don't add the feature to record in 8K resolution. Why? The Samsung Galaxy S20 had 8K video recording in 2020, three years ago. Apple should have 8K by now. I'm hoping that they're releasing the Apple A17 chip this year, but let's just see. A16 Bionic. Right, they're using the same one that the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max had. It was introduced on iPhone 14 Pro. Powerful, fast, and efficient it is. Be guided right to them with clear directions and distance. Also, thing about this, the time is always 9.41. Hang on, it's noisy here. Better? Okay, that is actually pretty cool. Now recently I've seen lots of like AI techniques such as RTX Voice and Adobe Podcast and this is like similar to it and they're finally implementing it into their phone to clear out the audio which is actually pretty cool. Okay, that transition was actually pretty cool. Should I do a video on how to recreate this effect? Look at this.
Now, the same cable can charge Mac, iPad, iPhone, and even AirPods Pros. Oh wow, are they finally putting USB-C on iPhones? Like, look at this setup I have going on right now. I have USB-C, iPhone, two different cables. It's really nice to have one cable to do both things. Controller in A17. A17, finally. It's about time. Accurately. They added ray tracing to iPhone? No way. There's no way that they actually added ray tracing to the iPhone. I don't know why you would ever need this. You're playing on a small phone screen like this. You're, you're not really going to notice that much of a difference. But there's really no point in turning it on. Because if you turn it on, then you're going to lose a whole lot of FPS. And it's barely going to make that much of a difference. But it's either you actually ray trace your image or you don't ray trace it and then try and make the visuals as close to the ray trace image as possible ah oh, 212,000 dislikes i didn't mm, 13 million views now when i started watching it was at 4 million what the f <laughs> the only thing that would surprise me is if they made the sensor a little bit larger with an even larger sensor than iphone 15 oh well they said it oh seriously all right, here we go. So here are my thoughts on this event, right? So obviously this is a highly anticipated event. Many people are expecting a lot, but many of the products that they're releasing seem to be very similar to last gen's products that they released in 2022. I think this is the big disappointment factor because there are lots of people who are expecting a lot more features, including me. But no, this is only an in incremental update. I'm gonna give this event like maybe a five and a half out of 10. They really could have done more, but maybe that's the byproduct of having multiple events per year instead of one event. So yeah, that's my reaction video. I hope you liked the video. If you'd like to please subscribe. I know I might have geeked out a little bit on this video, but uh, I just had to, I just had to, so. Yeah. Stuck at 60 hertz. Come on. When are you going to add 120 hertz to the base model for iPhone? It's about time. Samsung's been doing 120 hertz since like 2020. The Nothing Phone 2 is what I would recommend.